Hello, welcome to Ludic Science. In a previous series of videos, I showed you how to build this Stirling engine, and it worked very well. But now I want to increase the efficiency. Now, measuring efficiency is not easy. We need to know the energy at the input, that is the energy produced by the burner, and we also have to measure the energy output that we have here at the flywheel. This is not an easy task. So what I will do to estimate the efficiency is to keep the energy input constant. That is, I will always use the same burner and measure the speed of the engine, the RPM of the flywheel. Of course, the higher the speed with the same energy input, that will mean that we have more efficiency. So the first thing I will do is to measure the speed of the engine without modifications. This video is sponsored by GLC PCB. GLC PCB is a company that makes excellent quality PCBs at an unbeatable price. You can order boards online in minutes. After registration, upload your Gerber files, select the PCB properties, select the payment method and place your order. Best price and quality for all your PCB needs. As we could see, the speed of the engine is almost 200 RPM. The first thing I will change is to use a larger power piston and cylinder. The original design by Reverend Dr. Robert Stirling is such that the volume swept by the power piston, this volume here, in relation to the volume swept by the displacer piston, in this case is one quarter of the total length of the can, must be, this volume must be 50% larger than this volume. In our case, this is much more than 50%. So we need a larger power piston and cylinder. I will use this piston cylinder set that has almost double the volume of the original one. It is made in a similar way, only the piston is made with epoxy and graphite. In another video I will show you the details on how to make one. With the new piston installed on the engine, let's see if we can obtain some improvement in performance.
The engine ran at 320 revolutions per minute, more than 50% of increase with respect to the 200 RPM that we originally had. We could observe that after getting to 320, the speed reduced a little bit. And this is because the whole body of the displacer cylinder started to heat. That means that our cooling system is not good enough. Remember that a Stirling engine is more efficient when the temperature difference between the hot side and the cold side is larger. So we need to cool down as much as we can this side of the engine. Now I'm going to make another change to see how the motor behaves and that consists in reducing the distance that the piston, the displacer piston travels. For that I will move this axis closer to the center in such a way that it will describe a circumference of a smaller ready. And that with that we will obtain a smaller displacement in the displacer piston. I have made a series of holes progressively closer to the center and what I observed is that the smaller the distance, that is the smaller the distance traveled by the displacer piston, the engine runs at faster speed. However, it also takes longer to start, which means that we have less torque. And that makes sense. Right now, we have a stroke of a little bit less than one centimeter. So let's see what speed we can get.
Okay, as we could see, the maximum stable reading of our tachometer was a little bit above 600 RPM. That's three times more than the original speed of the engine that was 200 RPM. That's all for today. I hope you liked the video. If you want to help me, please visit my Patreon page. Thanks and see you in the next one.